Hello, I'm Tyler Smith of Battleship Pretension, and this is another entry in the Tyler's Movie Collection series, and we're continuing on with our uh, series about political films. I don't know if you guys were uh, following the Iowa caucuses, but uh, it was a very interesting, very interesting day, uh, whether you were Democrat or Republican. So uh, in, this, in the spirit of politics, uh, we're going to talk about, over the next few days, a few more, a few more uh, political films. So today I wanted to talk about uh, a film that many people have seen, um, but I feel like is not talked about very much anymore came out uh, about 12 years ago now, and it is Trey Parker's Team America World Police. Now, this is from the makers of South Park, Trey Parker and Matt Stone. And one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about it is because um, this last season of South Park has been fascinating. Uh, they really have... It's not at all unusual for Trey Parker and Matt Stone to uh, have their show or the movie, uh, the movies they make uh, mirror culture or um, politics or whatever, but this season they really seem to take uh, take dead aim at certain concepts like political uh, correctness, but also the idea of like uh, somebody like a Donald Trump rising to political power and that sort of thing. So uh, so it is a, it's, it's a really great season. I highly recommend it, but that's not what I want to be talking about. Um, <clears throat> uh, Team America World Police, I think, is one of the first instances of Trey Parker and Matt Stone really just doing their own thing politically. Uh, they, it came out in 2004, so it was right in the midst of uh, you know, the Iraq War, and it was a very unpopular war with some people, but with other people, uh, they were very happy and very pro-George uh, W. Bush and that sort of thing. And so it was a very divided country, and they decided that they were going to make... <laughs> They are going to make a movie about the war on terror. And they decided it was going to be sort of a parody of the Michael Bay action films. But they decided they were going to do it with marionette puppets. I'm not really sure why. I guess they just didn't want to do it live action and felt like maybe to animate it would uh, just be too close to what they were already doing with South Park. But for whatever reason, uh, it still turns out wonderfully. It is... It, Tonally, it is dead on. I mean, it is it is a perfect parody of those types of movies. And so if you're a movie fan and you enjoy the work of Michael Bay, or even if you don't, and maybe especially if you don't enjoy the work of Michael Bay, I think you will enjoy the film on that level uh, to the point that um, some of the best movie and television music is for south park and uh for the the movie and for their show and now for team america world police they just really have a very high standard for uh for the the, the original songs and obviously there is the one that a lot of people know which is uh, america fuck yeah but then there's also a wonderful song um uh the ti the specific title of which i don't recall but um but it's it's a song all about how how much a guy misses his girlfriend, and uh, and he misses her more than Michael Bay missed the mark when he made Pearl Harbor. So they're very directly referencing Michael Bay and his sensibilities. So uh, if you're a movie fan, you'll enjoy it on that level. But then, if you're if you're interested in politics, if you're interested in in you know discussions of uh, you know foreign policy, not that it's remarkably complex, but it is somewhat nuanced because it does understand that there is a One's, it's, it's not that one side is, is completely right and the other is completely wrong. Uh, it might not even be 70-30. You know, uh, it might actually be 50-50 or, or somewhere around there where you know, there's the understanding that there are a lot of dangerous people out there and maybe not everybody can stop them. And so perhaps that's something we should do. But at the same time, do we have to do it? Can, do we always have to, to lead the charge? And that is especially, uh, that's a conversation that is being had right now these days with talks of ISIS and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, so it's, as always, the satire is, I think, top notch, but they don't, they also don't sacrifice the comedy to get there. And some of the, some of the comedy in the film <clears throat> is remarkably lowbrow. And I, I'm sorry to say that, that that is often the comedy that I laugh at the most when I'm watching it. Um, there's a scene where the main character 
is is stumbling out of a bar and he throws up. Um, and it's meant to be this big dramatic moment. He's got like, you know, five o'clock shadow and that sort of thing. He's just in bad shape. And we've seen this scene in other movies, the very melodramatic uh, guy's been drinking too much. And now he's just he's throwing up in an alley. He's at his lowest point. Uh, but then the scene gets drawn out more and more until he just keeps throwing up. And the scene lasts probably uh, about a minute and a half to two minutes. I mean, That might be an exaggeration. But what sells it is the dramatic music doesn't stop. It doesn't treat it as funny. It treats it as just, oh, look, at, this is even more dramatic than we thought. Look how much he is throwing up. So that to me is one that scene makes me laugh hysterically, uh, as does a lot of the the more nuanced um, uh, satire and then just the parody of Michael Bay and certain types of action films. So there's a there's a lot going for the film. And so if you haven't seen it, check it out. I think it's a really great comedy and a film that in many ways has become, I think, relevant again. So uh, seek it out and enjoy. Bye.